Hey, what's up everyone? In this video, we're going to be going over XRP sister coin, XLM, also known as Stellar Lumens. This coin should most definitely be on your radar if you're finding XRP bullish, which I'm also personally bullish on. So if you haven't watched my video on why I'm bullish on Ripple, please watch my previous videos. The price action is more or less the same as XRP, but arguably has a better look in some ways, and it may even offer some better returns just based on this current count that you're seeing here. So let's construct it. Starting off with the macro, we can see that XLM is a pretty solid 1-2-1-2 setup, starting with the cycle degree in the row Roman normal 1-2 in the green, which is also a very bullish setup, although subjective, depending on if you believe in the future cycle continuations of coins. A 1-2-1-2 setup is specific pattern or is a specific pattern that indicates a strong potential for a significant price movement to the upside, where you have two of these consecutive 1-2s being built in the direction of the trend, and in this case to the upside. This means that you have a higher degree 1-2 as I've said, that is first created by the green Roman numeral, and then a 1-2 of a lesser degree, which should be smaller in size and time, especially if you're on the macro, which is going to be this primary degree in the yellow. Simply put, this just means that the market has completed the two initial sets of impulse waves and then corrections, and may be preparing for a much larger wave 3 to unfold to the upside. In the Elliott Wave 3, Wave 3s are typically going to be the most powerful wave. And in a good 1 2 1 2 setup, the anticipation for an exceptionally strong Wave 3 is going to be following suit, which is going to be expected if we're following this count. The setup is highly valued by Elliott Wave traders because it can offer significant trading opportunities if correctly identified. And we have a pretty good setup so far, especially here on the macro. They're usually a little bit more accurate on the micro timeframes. Now, the 2018 bear market up to the year 2020 gave us a wave correction for a Wave 2, where it retraced a portion of the previous wave, impulse wave one and is considered the pullback of the initial wave so this wave two will take the form of a corrective pattern such as a zigzag so we're talking about wave twos here which is going to be denoted as a simple zigzag pattern or a simple abc pattern which is the most common type of pattern for a wave two and then we also have possible flat idea which is characterized as a sideways structure or even sometimes even more complex corrections like double threes or triple three type corrections that can be both applied to the zigzag or sideways corrections where you add another x or wave y or xz uh, wave pattern as well so the only pattern that can't be applied to a wave two is a triangle so keep that in mind in this case, for our cycle 1-2, the first cycle degree 1-2 in the green, we have completed a double corrective zigzag known as a double zigzag, known and no, denoted as a WXY pattern. So we also have the second 1-2 of the primary degree in the yellow that is going to be completed as a triple zigzag, which is also constructed in similar fashion to the upside, which is going to be five waves going into that primary wave one. But in this case, the wave two is created as a triple zigzag corrective pattern, which is going to be denoted as a WXYXZ pattern. The, important is, the importance of this going forward is that we are now anticipating a powerful extended move for a cycle wave three to the upside, continuing the LA wave sequence. And the risk management approach is pretty simple as the LA wave three provides us with clear invalidation levels. All you have to do is use the termination of wave twos as a point for uh, setting potential stop loss to manage risk uh, as a move beyond the origin of wave one would invalidate the wave count entirely. Now, I mentioned that this overall 1 2 1 2 setup does have a good look. It does create some skepticism, however, in terms of the actual targets because it's very highly ambitious. So, what we can do to help mitigate us being potential bag holders, we work on the potential or possible drawback that it may be too ambitious and create alternative scenarios. And the alternative scenario would be a triangle that is similarly being built like XRP's triangle. So, let's take a look at the triangle idea. Now, what's interesting is that if you take a read into the actual Elliott Wave principle, the 1-2-1-2 one, two, one, two idea is often confused with triangles. But what's great about a triangle is that you have all of the necessary, when you have all the necessary subways created, it provides us with an end target or end goal. That's the most important thing. And in this case, if we are positioned within a wave 4, especially with the wave E that is not completed, if you're positioned within a wave 4 or wave B, the end result is going to be right around 5 to $10 per XLM, which is similar to XRP's target as well. So with this triangle idea, you're not only mitigating the ambitious targets of the first one two one two setup but it still gives you highly conservative targets or returns to the upside where we have an end result and we may not be potential bag holders if we're still continuing to anticipate possible wave three to the upside so if we're going to take a lesson or two from previous bear markets where nothing goes up forever this may be a pretty good target zone for how this may be continuing its move to the upside not only that but also completing its entire move to the upside where we have a possible potential reversal to happen back to the downside
downside. So that is one thing to keep in mind, and that's why this triangle idea may be a better suit or better fitting suit for this possible move to the upside. That gives us the end result of that possible $5 to $10 range. So that's how I'm currently seeing the bullish move. Now we do have possible alternatives for a bearish move, which needs to be discussed regardless, because there are always going to be opportunities and possibilities for us to move to the downside. And the only way I can do that is that even though that we have completed this entire move to the upside, we may be working in a larger cycle wave one, two, meaning that this move here is constructed as a five or three, three, five structure. Remember, I talked about how wave twos can also be constructed as a sideways flat structure. Well, the flat structure can be constructed as a three, three, five structure. And in this case, we're looking for the final impulse wave of that C wave, which is constructed as five waves in itself. So as that three, 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 five structure is going to be completed, we have this being as the same WXY. And instead of this being the first wave one, two uh, being created for that larger uh, cycle degree one two and primary one two this is now looking as a possible abc to the upside that is completing a corrective move to the upside for wave b and then we're looking for a impulse move to the downside as a five wave move if you're seeing this as a possible flat so this is the alternative scenario that we may be looking for in terms of the pullback if we're looking for xlm to do another pullback to the downside and in this case we should be ending anywhere around less than 0 0.02 per xlm which is around 60 percent of a drop from i'm oh, sorry 72 percent that's a pretty far drop but since xlm and xrp has been trading above and creating higher lows that is the most important thing on the macro and that's extremely bullish going forward with the current data given so those are the two uh bullish scenarios first idea is the cycle one two and primary wave one two known as the one two one two setup which is extremely bullish and if you're seeing this as too ambitious of targets you can just say that we have an end goal of the possible triangle breakout which is going to be giving us target around five to ten dollars per xlm and then if you're bearish and you're seeing the crypto markets to go down entirely altogether, then you're looking at a 70% drawdown to finally complete as possible ABC where we may be working in a larger one, two cycle degree. So hopefully that was helpful. I'm still bullish on XLM, let alone XRP. I believe these two coins are going to work in both in tandem. Usually they work pretty much in tandem with each other in terms of the price action. So hopefully that was helpful. This may be another opportunity to build in upon, upon your portfolio if you're finding XRP bullish. I'm just trying to give out everyone um, as much information as I can just based on the chart. Charts. The charts do the speaking for me, not the, the actual news, but the news for XRP has given us some fairly good amount of confidence that this is going to be moving to more bullish territory to the upside because the SEC case has ended. XLM is more of an indirect and kind of shadowed type coin that shouldn't be overlooked, and this coin is having a very, very good setup going forward. Hopefully that was helpful. Remember, none of this is financial advice, ladies and gentlemen. If you are interested in joining the X-Force Discord membership, the link is in the description below as well. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you're not following me on social media please do give me a follow on x at x first global thank you very much i'll see you guys in the next video bye bye